Hello and welcome to ProTrader Strategies Market Commentary for Wednesday, September the 13th. My name is Eric Wilkinson. Some of you may recognize me as the Wolfman from CNBC, Fox Business, or even the Wall Street Journal for my commentary on everything from economic to geopolitical and market analysis. Please keep in mind that everything that we talk about in these market commentaries is not a solicitation to buy or sell any of these securities or strategies. At the end of the day, we're here to teach you some different strategies that you can implement into your portfolios, but please do that in your own way. The reason why I can't give you a recommendation on a particular stock or strategy is because I don't know your risk parameters. I don't know what's in your portfolios, and therefore what I'm doing could be counterintuitive to what you are already doing. And please remember that past performance of any trading system or methodology is not necessarily indicative of future results. Having all of that out of the way, let's get it on. We do have quite a bit of economic data coming in today. Uh, across the pond, we got German final CPI. Now remember these uh, data points across the pond for like CPI, consumer price index, are not from their flash CPI numbers. So they aren't as widely looked at or uh, as um, influential as some of the other ones that we see coming out. So, but they are data and we should probably look at them nonetheless. But German's final CPI month over month came in at 0.1%, which is where it was expected. And then we also got average Earnings index out of Great Britain came in at 2.1%, was expected to be 2.3%, so a little bit lower than expected on that front. Their unemployment rate also did downtick just a little bit and came in at 4.3%, and that is also out of Great Britain. Uh, European industrial production month over month came in at 0.1%, and uh, then here in the United States, we got PPI, which is producer price index month over month, slightly lower than expected at 0.2%, was expected to be 0.3%, no revisions the last month's number, and then core producer price index came in at 0.1%, expected to be 0.2%. The other thing we got here in the United States were crude oil inventories, and as you can see, well, not really, just kidding, uh, there was a build uh, of 5.9 million barrels, expected to be a build of 4.1 million barrels. So almost 2 million barrels over what was expected and no revisions the last month's number, but we have crude oil up uh, quite nicely today, uh, if you are a bull, if you will, but it is right up against that 38.2 Fibonacci level. So a bit of a bounce there in crude oil. Um, you know, I was talking about how I was thinking crude oil is probably going to move higher. I have on a long call spread in USO in both my IRA and in my uh, in my uh, margin account. So that's actually getting very close to um, my 50% of max profit on that. It's the October eight and a half, ten and a half call spread in there. And I'm trying to get out for about $1.50. Last I checked, it was trading around $1.38. So it's pretty close. So if we can get above this Fibonacci level, I'll be happy, despite the fact that there is a build and one would intuitively think that it would come off. It's not doing that. It's kind of uh, um, bucking that whole mantra. Anyway, on to gold futures. They're down by $4. It's causing GLD to come down. I'll talk about GLD here in a little bit once we get into some of my trades that I've done. But gold coming off, uh, bonds are coming off. It seems like everybody is probably not going to be too happy today because a lot of the markets are in negative territory other than uh crude oil and the Dow Jones for that matter, but we have uh, the bonds in negative territory as well. It looks like they could be trying to find a temporary bottom right here. This is going to act as support, um, but I do believe it's going to come down here to where the volume node for uh, the bonds is located just slightly, about a point below where we currently are. VIX is coming off. Uh, despite the fact that I mentioned that some of the equities are in negative territory, like the NASDAQ, the E-mini S&Ps, Dow Jones is in positive territory, and uh, we are seeing the VIX come off. That's the volatility index coming out of some of these equities. As you can see, the Dow Jones Industrial Average up almost uh, 17 points now, 16.14. Uh, that can't bust through this value area high that I was talking about yesterday, so it's kind of pushing up. The more it trades up here, that value area high is going to creep a little bit higher too, so keep that in mind as well. And then uh, the NASDAQ, uh, in negative territory, albeit only three points, uh, maybe four points in an, of that, but very inside day, as you can see, this uh, is inside of yesterday's 
tight range as well. So we even have a tighter range today. E-mini s and is down not quite a point right now, uh, but did make a new historical high here, as you can see. And as we look at the breakdown of the E-mini s and ps the thing to really note here is this happened after, after the close yesterday and in the early hours of the reopening, we saw this print the historical new highs. So that's gonna be kind of discounted by most of the traders. You could see that this did create a new historical high intraday. Uh, if we can take off the, um, the extended hours settings, you can see that that print, uh, oh, I thought it would have printed that uh, right here. It still is a print from yesterday uh, as the historical high of 24, 94 and a half. But when we put that back in, you'll see that the overnight session has created 24.95 and a half, so a point higher. Uh, the market intraday is going to want to try and print that intraday. So uh, that happened right after, maybe some shorts started uh, panicking a little bit when the market reopened or there was thin markets and it was able to push up there, but market is going to want to print that intraday. So onto a couple of things that I've done with Apple. Uh, I talked about this yesterday. <clears throat> in Apple, I had this on this trade on yesterday for a while and was trying to get out of it. If you remember, in Apple, I have in my margin account, I was short the 180 calls outright as a naked trade. And then in my IRA, I went in there and sold the 180. In October, I sold the 180 and bought the 205 calls create that spread. Now it's not really in line with what my rules are for the width of the spread and how much you're going to collect there. It's in line with my rules of, you know, when you have a IRA or something like that, the rules say you can't just be naked short a call. So in order to synthetically create that situation in an IRA to make it appropriate for the powers that be, I say go out there and buy the first call uh, for a nickel and then that creates that spread that limits the risk in a sense. Not that we would ever take that spread that deep uh, uh, if it were to go against us, but it just uh, meets the rules that the powers that be say you have to have. And originally I sold that call spread for 75 cents. With that, went in for 30, uh, sorry, 50% of my max profit and was able to buy it back yesterday for 36 cents. Now you can probably get out of it a little bit better today and you could have gotten out of it better than I did yesterday when I talked about in the daily market commentaries, it was really close. Uh, then Apple had this big announcement about the iPhone X coming out and the market actually started rallying. So it did get away from me and I was chatting with my buddy, you know, did I want the penny or did I want the trade? Well, at the end of the day, I kind of wanted the penny rather than the trade and when it was going against me, I just had those mark. I had those orders in there. Uh, now, during the big announcement, they tried to talk about how the new iPhone X has facial recognition, so you can do these emojis around your face, and when you're talking, move your head, uh, moving your mouth, those emojis are going to do the same thing. Well, the first phone that they did it with failed to perform that task for them, so they had to rush out another phone uh, to try and get that to work on live TV and that caused the overall market to kind of come off because people were starting to think, well, there's a glitch in this, there's a bug, maybe mine's not gonna work. And it really caused the market to come down. I got clipped off and I was actually on uh, the phone with a friend of mine and he could hear my both my IRA and my margin account given the cha-chings of uh, getting filled. And he was like, why did you have that resting order in there? You know, you probably could get that better right now. You know, you're maybe left some money on the table. And I was like, I don't care. I'm sticking to my rules of taking 50% of my max profit. And that's behind me. I don't care. I'm not going to look back now. So both of those out in my margin account, I sold those 180 calls for uh, 80 cents or 79 cents and was able to buy those back also for right around uh, 36 cents. So got out of both of those yesterday on that move, probably a little bit better today going forward. But like I said, I'm not looking back on that. I'm out of it. I'm done with it. Uh, on to GLD. Now with GLD, today's move uh, really allowed the gamma to take out a lot of the um, premium in my margin account. Now in my 
trading account. Remember, I did this kind of as a, uh, a lesson to everyone that when you're doing naked strategies, sometimes it's less risky than doing a spread because the spread causes you to come closer to at the money. And this is a perfect example of that. When I set this up, uh, I was able to collect the same amount of premium for my naked strategy in the GLD as opposed to in my IRA with the spread. And in the margin account, I was able to get out of it now. So I did the September and sold the 30, or sorry, September sold the 128 calls, which was is a lot higher than where I am in my uh, IRA. In my IRA, I have on the, uh, I'm short the, what is it, the September 125 and a half, and then long the 126 and a half call spread. All right, so in that, uh, the 125 and a halves, as you can see, are just in the money. The short calls are uh, still tested because we're higher than that, right? So I need that market to come down just a little bit more to get those calls to come out of the money. Now, I only have a couple of days to go, and gamma is really going to affect that, just like it did in my 128 calls in my margin account, my major trading account. I sold those 128 calls for 31 cents today with the gamma and everything else coming out of it. I was able to buy them back for three cents. Now, um, would normally have covered those sooner, uh, but I did it a lot smaller. So when I was just looking at my trading account, it didn't look like uh, it was the right number uh, to get out at just at first glance. But then when I dug into it, I was like, oh, uh, the reason why it doesn't look like I'm making that much money in it is because I had it at a much smaller uh, quantity in order to make that for the example. So pardon me for that. But having said that, the rule still applies that those 128 uh, calls were tested. As you can see, we, I did take it, take some heat on those, but the probabilities were in my favor and the probabilities beat out. Uh, the probabilities as using a spread because the probabilities of the spread are much higher of being tested. So when I'm talking about risk, I'm talking about probabilities and the probabilities on a naked strategy are less likely to be hurt than the probabilities on a spread. So I'm unable to get out of my 125, 126 and a half short call spread in uh, September for the GLD as of right now. I need a bit more of a push down um, and get down into closer to 125 and I'll be probably able to get out of that. So I'm gonna try and look to cover that for a scratch if anything else. It was very close this morning, but uh, still not able to get out of my IRA. So still at risk in my IRA with my limited risk strategy and my higher risk strategy, quote unquote, higher risk, uh, which I look at it as a lower risk strategy because of probabilities, um, I'm able to get out of that for a nice profit. All right, so then finally on to MasterCard. I haven't let go of this. You know, I talked about this looking like it kind of blew its top right here, uh, gapping out on basically no information whatsoever, thought it was gonna uh, come off. I got in a little early, didn't wait for it to get confirmed. Uh, and if you remember, I said, if it gets above here, I'm out. Well, it did blast above there made a new high, uh, but today it's looking like it's confirmed to the downside. So I'm thinking this is really a topped out area. So I decided to go into my margin account. I didn't do this in my IRA because it's still a little bit risky um, to uh, put this trade on. So I went in there and did the November and I bought the 145 puts and then sold the 135 puts to define that risk in a sense. So uh, I'm long the one, or sorry, yeah, one long the 145, short the 135. If I can get it to come down and cover these, both of these gaps, I will do quite nicely on it. Uh, and in that, I uh, paid $4.52, so less than 50%. The width of those strikes to get in, uh, I'm gonna look to take uh, 50% of my max profit, which should be somewhere being able to cover this around $7. Uh, if we can get this pulled back down to 135, cover that gap or right in and around there, then I'll be uh, looking pretty good on that trade and hopefully be able to make up for some of the loss I had in MasterCard earlier on. All right, all of that I know was a lot to teaching in and of there, um, just to make a couple of points, but 
Friday's webinar is going to be on the long, uh, stra uh, sorry, long strangle, and I'm going to be talking about the rules in order to set that up for a higher probability of success for you. I know you can go online, read about how to do a long straddle, but I'm going to show you different environments that make it better to put this on that will increase your probabilities of success going forward. All right, so go to protraderstrategies.com and sign up for that. If you can't take that, take it easy.